this is the MSI Z270 Gaming M5 motherboard. It's an enthusiast board and has been released to accommodate the new KB Lake 7th generation CPUs from Intel, and also the older 6th gen. Today I'm going to be reviewing this offering from MSI. So let's get into the physical features of the board. It has 6 standard 6GB a second SATA 3 connectors for 6 hard drives, SSDs or hybrids. Then we have the U.2 port for a single U.2 NVMe SSD device. We also have 2 slots for M.2 SSDs in the form of 2 turbo M.2 slots. One comes with an M.2 shield which has a thermal pad and heat shield to basically keep your M.2 SSD cool and to avoid any slowdowns. It does also look good on the motherboard, but it's kind of a shame there aren't two of them. And you can also remove the shield pretty easily if you don't need it, and perhaps your OCD kicks in with there being an uneven amount of shields. In short, there is plenty of options for storage with this motherboard, including the more modern and recent offerings. There is one PCI Express 3.0 x 16 slot, one 3.0 x 8, and one 3.0 x 4. And then we have three the 3.0 times ones. You can use two NVIDIA GPUs in SLI mode on this motherboard, or three AMD GPUs in Crossfire mode. There are four DDR4 RAM slots that have DDR4 steel armor that's supposed to fight electrical overcurrents with extra grounding points and also electromagnetic interference from affecting the sticks. The speeds can go to 3800MHz+, plus. they also have LED lights to indicate where you have gotten the sticks installed, just a nice little touch. There are four system fan 4 pin slots, one CPU fan and one 12 volt pump fan slot, so decent headroom for your cooling needs. There is MSI's Dual 8 channel Audio Boost 4 which will stand in for a sound card or dedicated audio device which is kind of the trend for new enthusiast boards. It comes with an isolated audio design, audio caps for warm sound, several audio channels layered into the PCB and golden audio connectors. It is actually under one of the covers so I couldn't get footage of the chips but they are there, somewhere, hidden. It also comes with Namic 2, a nifty audio control software, but I'll talk about that later, along with the LED that follows the audio channel along the board. I'd like to say that the Audio Boost 2 on my old MSI Gaming 5 motherboard was a treat for audio, and this solution is no exception. There are two JUSB 3 slots for two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports on the front of your case, and one of them is located away from the SATA ports, which can get very crowded and hard to route to with cable management, which I struggled with with my last build, so it is nice to have one just chilling out in the open. There are also your basic JUSB 1 connectors for USB 2 ports for your front panel as well. On the rear IO or back panel, we have the PS 2 gaming device port, 2 times USB 2.0s, a CMOS button and BIOS flashback USB slot for quick BIOS flashback if something goes horribly wrong, a display and HDMI slot, 2 times USB 3.1 ports, generation 2 type A and type C, killer E 2500GB LAN port which boasts better latency for consistent gaming, 5 HD audio connectors plus an optical output, and also 2 VR USB 3.1 generation 1 ports. So to go over that, the Z270 Gaming 5 also has its eyes set on the VR realm, with a dedicated VR Boost smart chip that they suggest boosts your VR gaming. So it links up to the VR Ready ports on the back panel and are supposed to keep a strong signal and prevent drops that normal USBs might suffer. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a Vive or Rift to do any testing, but sickness in VR products isn't actually something that really affects me, but if you have been struggling, this might be the way forward. They are also boasting a one-click VR Ready button with their MSI Gaming app which sets all the components to the highest performance and in their words, makes sure other software applications won't impact it. So basically, your VR gaming. So it is a one-click boost and game high profile running button while slipping everything else into lower profile. Which could be handy if you do have a VR headset. Moving on to the visuals, with the Z270 M5, MSI have ditched the pretty overbearing and niche taste of bright red for an all black PCB and grey finish on all the covers. Personally, I prefer this darker design to the red theme as it gives you more options to match with really any other design or components that don't really clash when you stare through your case window. One thing that surprised me was that the big protruding covers for the back panel and a few other components including those audio chips were not metal. 
When I took the motherboard out of the anti-static plastic bag, I thought they were perhaps metal for heat dissipation, mainly because of the granite-like finish with specs to imitate big chunks of metal that we've seen on other motherboards. However, these are all plastic. I used to have the MSI Gaming 5 motherboard, and that did have some hefty bits of metal on it, so I was surprised coming to this build that they would opt for plastic. Visually though, once it is in your case and you're staring at it, like I was just in the bag just down in below me, I think it would pretty much fool anyone into the idea of this sort of metallic premium. Just something worth pointing out whilst you're also watching this video and you might not be able to tell. Moving on to the LED craze that all manufacturers are trying to tap into, MSI uses their mystic lighting system through the use of their gaming app and you can control not only the LED lights and strips on the board, but also with some connectors on the board itself, some extra connectors, you can sync up other LED products and strips you might want to put into your case. You can also sync MSI keyboards and mice to your case's LED profile. Pretty neat. The LED lighting on the board itself is kind of subtle, but actually I quite prefer that. With a streak running along the audio channel path, the MSI Dragon and Loyal lighting up on the badge, then there are the status LEDs on the PCI Express slots and DDR4 slots that only light up white but are pretty nifty. There is also a debugging LED with the status code indicators that can be hella useful if you are in a bind. And I found when I had issues with initial CPU problem, with the flashing light status and lights and code, I was able to isolate the issue pretty quickly and get it sorted as the codes and the flashes go to what, what's in the manual and give you an idea of what's going wrong. With GPUs getting bigger and some pretty hefty cooling solutions, it does make sense not to go crazy with the LEDs on the motherboard, as they would just be blocked out by other components. And the connectors and syncing are what appeals to me, as you'll be able to put down your own strips in the case and sync them all up. So we've covered the physical features and the looks, so what about the software controls? First up we have the MSI Gaming App. It allows with one click of a button to overclock the CPU and GPU. It is also a way you can control the LEDs, scrolling through effects like breathing, flashing, etc, and the colours themselves. One of the limitations at the moment that might be updated with the BIOS update is the colour selection is pretty limited, and even comparing the GPU selection wheel, it's quite lacking. Still, it's easy to use with just a few clicks, and you can watch the lights change in real time. The MSI Command Center, if you aren't software overclocker-phobic, and swear by the BIOS menu is a good alternative with some pretty extensive overclocking tools for CPU, with ratios, a whole host of voltage controls, RAM timings, and even a one-click game boost or overclock genie. The Command Center also gives you control over all your system fans and their configurations with smart curve based on fan profiles, and just your one speed linear settings as well. There's also a heat sensor showing ambient temperatures in the case and the CPU itself. Not all too groundbreaking, but it's presented nicely with the schematic of the motherboard and heat maps. We then have the audio controls with Nahemic 2, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I gave it a shot, which I did talk about earlier. It gives you six profiles, preset, three for gaming, three for multimedia, with some interesting features like voice clarity and smart loud loudness to auto level sounds. It also features a virtual surround sound, which could help in FBF's games, perhaps in 3D uh, awareness. You can also turn it all off with a simple click. And generally, I like the sounds you can get with this app, but unfortunately as I record vocals a lot, I need to keep sound as unfiltered as possible, so I can't use it all of the time. Whilst testing, I did put it on when watching films and playing games and turned it off outside of these areas. And there is a feature that tracks sound locations with a compass-like needle, but I did feel this was almost like cheating in a game, so I'm not sure I could use that feature with a good conscience. Finally, there is MSI X-Boost, which boosts the performance of storage devices, both an internal hard drive form or form of a USB interface. They say up to 20 performance on USB devices and 10% on hard disks slash SSDs to help with game loading, etc. It's something really hard to test though, and I guess it's just a nice feature to have. In conclusion, the Z270 Gaming M5 is pretty heavily laden with features, including some pretty neat nifty LED options for syncing up custom LED strips and your gaming peripherals, and packaged with all the hardware and software features an enthusiast would want to tweak with. So it's a very solid entry by MSI and likely to be my daily driver going forward after I treated my rig to a Valentine's upgrade with an i7-7700K. 
Anyway, what did everyone else think about this MOBO? Do you have it perhaps? Or could it be making its way into your next build? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Subscribe for more of my content, like and dislike as you see fit, and I'll see you all next time.